Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. After looking at Karahan Tepe, Harbetsevan Tepesi and Sefer Tepe in recent videos, I next decided to take a look at Kurt Tepe, whose site of interest is actually known as Kurt Tepesi, another one of the 12 Tastapella sites that's being excavated or is due to be excavated across Turkey. This site is located on a hill that dominates the Koban Creek Pass, a small mound on a ridge that's formed by high limestone plateaus. Experts note it has very poor soil. The western half of the site has been subject to illegal excavations and the northern end even has a large electrical pylon installed into it. This makes it a less than ideal site for archaeological work. The illegal excavations, although unwelcome, did highlight the importance of the site, as T-shaped pillars have been removed and left on the surface. Two such pillars from Kurt Tepesi have been found in the nearby Kosacik village, located 6 kilometers to the southeast. So again, like with many other pre-pottery Neolithic sites in the Tastapella region, we can only guess how much has already been taken and undocumented. The pillars found in initial surveys around 2.5 metres in length are 50 to 70 centimetres wide with a thickness of 25 centimetres, not dissimilar to the T-shaped pillar that was found at Sefer Tepe. One of the pillars is decorated, containing what looks like a broad groove in the form of a necktie and a single strip chevron pattern on a scalped area that's located on the side of the pillar. You can see them quite clearly in this image. The single strip that emerges from the chevron, which almost looks like a modern day tie you would wear with a suit to a wedding, is something not seen at any other Tepe site. Other T-shaped pillars at Kurt Tepesi are plain with no reliefs carved into them. At the site we do find a lot of flint being naturally occurring at Kurt Tepe itself. Arrowheads have been recovered, scrapers, drills, sickle blades and obsidian blades. Stone beads and pestle parts made from basalt were also found. In the surveys that have been taken, no ceramics have been found and so it is very much in keeping with the other pre-pottery Neolithic Tepe and Tepesi sites, those I've covered in the past few days. In size and scale, it's pretty much identical to Harbetsevan Tepesi and Sefer Tepe. The finds so far are also pretty much the same. Experts say the T-shaped pillars are almost identical to those in layer 2 at Gebekli Tepe, meaning that Kurt Tepesi likely dates to the pre-pottery Neolithic B, possibly around 11,000 years old. Looking at Google Earth, and you can see the areas that have been illegally excavated, and in places, you can make out potential rectangular enclosures. There is also only one video on YouTube that's labelled Kurt Tepe, where a young child is walking through the site and seems to point out what could be the top of a T-shaped pillar. It's clear there is a lot more to uncover at this site. It's interesting because Kurt Tepesi, Harbetsevan Tepesi and Sefer Tepe are all similar in size and scale and also have similar archaeology and all of them somewhat surround the main large site to the east of the Haran Plain, the huge and important Karahan Tepe. Karahan Tepe seems to be the centre, and the smaller Tepe and Tepesi sites could certainly be its satellites. I can't help but think the smaller sites are somehow related to hunting, especially with the huge abundance of arrowheads. Maybe they are in fact Karahan Tepe outposts, where people were stationed to hunt animals to bring food back to Karahan Tepe, where food could have been stored and distributed to the wider population. I think in time we will see a clearer picture of how this pre-pottery Neolithic society was organised. Maybe certain people were positioned at outposts and hunted. Maybe others stayed at Karahan Tepe and processed cereals, made garments, beads and jewellery and so on. The real beginnings of a civilised society. This level of understanding will hopefully come in the future. But for now, I think we can certainly see an initial glimpse into the lives of our ancient ancestors. 
Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.